feet and away he goes as the third and final leg of this sidecar championship. And that looks like Sean Mallows uh, hitting the front, uh, David. Yes, it's Mallows at the front. And uh, there, that's what it's like out on the racetrack. Really exciting stuff from that Steve with helmet the picture there. Camera on his helmet. Well, he's overtaking people. This is a, a remarkable improvement on the previous performance. No, Steve, I didn't mean it, honestly. He's up behind Stuart Brown there when he comes to the championship series. And off they go over the wall down the hill and a problem for the guy in front of them. You can see how difficult it is to, to see in the dust as well. You see it suddenly clear around the corner there. You don't get a very good view when it's dusty. And, uh, well... Steve Pisani overtakes uh, another rider, Pete Clark. Meanwhile, it's the local boy Sean Mallows out in front, and that man, Chris Etheridge, again in second place. And of course, uh, Chris riding with last year, for the last three years, in fact, with Shane Skeets, who was Sean Mallows' passenger, knows everything that Shane's going to do. And uh, Chris Etheridge putting the pressure on Sean Mallows, but Mallows hanging on. Paul Millard there in third place, and Etheridge again just pushing that front wheel first one side, then the other, then the other. Oh, a bit of a problem here. 23 and 20. Kevin Young is 20, 23. Steve Peters back with the leaders, and Etheridge has still been unable so far to find a way past Sean Mallows. Sean from Tiptree, local lad. Had a very tough time in the previous leg, of course. The similar battle. You see there, Millard poised all the time just behind them. Number one crew. And the, uh, you can see the dust being kicked up now. Oh, dear, dear, dear. You really wouldn't want to be taking them out. But it's a lot of dirt as it's kicked up from the uh, rear tyres of the people ahead. Paul Millard there in third spot. Well, look at this. Etheridge is consolidating his position in the championship, but if he stays ahead of Paul Millard, that uh, again will help his position. But of course, if he could put Sean Mallows between himself and Paul Millard, it'd be better. And he cuts through to the inside, but Mallows has none of it. Get back, he says. Get back. And Sean Mallows stays out in front. Chris Etheridge to settle for second place. It was on the next downhill run that he overtook him last time, so Etheridge will be looking for another quick downhill burst. Etheridge much quicker on this uh, particular section. No, oh, but Mallows, uh, well, maybe uh, learning from the experience of the first race. Their earlier encounters, I should say. Mallows keeping a very sensible line there in the middle of the track, and uh, really that makes it very difficult for Chris Etheridge to overtake. The time Paul Millard nicely poised there behind them. Oh, and Sean Mallow's almost disaster. The front wheel almost tucked itself underneath and flicked them both off. And that's the very last thing that he would want to happen. At Etheridge and Paul Millard putting uh, on the pressure as well. The front three outfits absolutely nose to tail. And uh, that was a very nasty moment uh, for Sean Mallow's. And look at Paul Millard here. And all the time, of course, Chris is looking for a, a route one side of Mallows. Mallows holding this middle, middle line, it leaves a big gap the other side for Millard to get past Chris. So, all the time, this battle's going on. Just one of the interesting things about these motocross men is they're all riding on remold tyres. They found in sidecars, they use remold motocross tyres because the novels stay on longer. Obviously helps with the costing, obviously. Quite a bit cheap, cheaper than normal motocross tyres and uh, proving quite a lot stronger too. How many tyres do they get through? Oh, and Etheridge almost pushing Mallows out of the way. Well, um, we couldn't quite see them, but I'm sure that was almost contact, uh, Dave. Well, certainly was, and they won't worry about contacting. They like uh, touching the, uh, the passenger's backside with their front wheel, and that makes him sit up. That makes it very difficult, but there, Etheridge has gone through. Oh, superb manoeuvre there by Etheridge. And on he, the downhill again. Yeah, he's very, very quick. And uh, Sean Mallows, disappointed there. 
Well, let's have a chance to see the overtaking manoeuvre again. There's Etheridge lining himself up on the outside. He'll switch back to the inside, getting the drive off the turn, levels with Sean Mallows, and leaps through to take the lead before plunging downhill. Uh, but Sean Mallows still holding off the reigning champion, Paul Millard. Sean, a local lad, as I say, sponsored by uh, Trent First from Sudbury, one of the local gang who put a lot of money into their uh, racing outfit. And now Paul Millard lining himself up. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Mallow's just squeezing him out there. He's, uh, what, just 21 years of age, I think, Sean Mallow's. I mean, he's uh, holding off some very experienced characters here. Yes, and Sean, uh, certainly one of the quickest riders, as I say, wasn't he? The best at staying on his machine, but now is, and getting a bit of machine reliability too. He's really paying over the second half of the season. And look at that uh, opposite lock there from Paul Millard on the outfit. Got the back end hanging out, so lock the front wheel over to correct it. Really is a very, very talented uh, driver of this outfit. About to go in the book, and Etheridge in the meantime is pulling further and further away. And this is a bit like the solo situation where it's Paul Millard. There you can see Etheridge running down one side of the hill. Sean Mallow's holding off Paul Millard. And uh, well, again, you have the feeling, all credit to Sean, he's riding very well indeed, but you have the feeling, Dave, don't you, that if Millard could only get past, he would close the gap on that race leader. Oh, he's definitely being held up, and I uh, say this. All level again, and once again, Sean just a little bit slower on that part, and Paul Millard will have noticed where Chris Etheridge went through in the past. Now, the question is, can the reigning champion, number one, Paul Millard, champion for the past four years, we've got a chance to see that overtaking manoeuvre again. And again, you can see Millard doing as Etheridge did, tighter line, winds the power on sooner, and again, Mallows just eases off there for a moment, but Millard doesn't, he winds it up, jumps the first jump and ready to go over the next one as well. And this is what it's like a bit further down the field. Steve Pisani, the local lads from Clacton, having a terrible dust up. Jim Mogi there in front of him. Jim's had some good point scoring rides today. Got a fair drive home after this one, hasn't he? Yes, all the way up to Newcastle. Jim, uh, almost a foreigner. Very few people can understand what he says, but uh, they can certainly understand the way he rides. Oh, with a big gap there, and Steve Pisani tried to seize the opportunity. Over one jump, down another one. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, I'll tell you what, David, they are better men than me. I don't doubt that. <laughs> I don't doubt they're fitter anyway. But uh, these are going to make very exciting pictures. If you get really close to your screen, you should feel ill. I think this is a sport you don't really want. This is a sport you want to watch, not to do. Yes, definitely. Big jump. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think we could all feel that one. It's like the roller coaster without the knowledge that you're definitely going to go up the other side. This would make a lovely bit of 3D, wouldn't it? Yes. Oh, and, uh, well, why would John Telford so nips through there. Steve Pisani getting carried away, taking the pictures, I think. Well, that's John it. Telford calls him out. Well, there are the leaders. So Nick Nohans brace, holding on tight here. Got his work cut out. Brace and Etheridge. A formidable combination. And, of course, that investment uh, in the machinery, split between two people, doesn't make it so bad, but it's... You mean I'm afraid the passengers cost money. You mean the passengers have to pay to be treated like this? Some of them do, but most of them don't, unfortunately, for the drivers. But a lot of enthusiasts put a bit of money into each outfit, and that's what keeps these lads going. There is the second place man, Paul Millard, and that hero, Jason Peters, with that back. It must be hurting like nobody's business. Yes, some of the best fun that two people can have, though, as a team. Sidecar racing. Really, it is a teen sport. Well, when you're close. <laughs> when you're close. Here's Paul Millard, the reigning champion, beaten twice here. And he'll probably go home and kick 
picked the cat, won't he? Very, he was happy with the bike, but uh, he's getting a bit ancient now. He's had a couple of seasons on that machine. And it's been bent. Now, uh, less than half a lap to go to the, uh, the chequered flag. Well, no hands has not done anything too sensational uh, today. No, he's yeah, trying to give us an odd way, but Chris still turning on the power. It may not be that easy for him. I think he's going to say to him in the moment, slow down a bit, Chris. I want to wave to everybody. Make the most of this one. There he goes. <laughs> it's one arm in the air. Well, I think this is a second. Here, he Here goes the Nick hands. No Hands. Yeah. <laughs> Truly impressive for both men. Chris Hendridge has been an absolute star today's superb form. And uh, Nick No Hands Brace living up to his nickname. <laughs> and he does it again. Well, when you've got a lead as big as this, you can, you can uh, do things like this. Cruise over the line. Check and flag is out. And again, excellent performance. Chris Etheridge and passenger Nick Brace. And uh, a charge there from uh, Paul Millard. Took him a lot closer at the finish, but a long, long way behind still. So it's Chris Etheridge the winner. Paul Millard in second place. We await the arrival of number nine, Sean Mallows, the local boy, and he will be home in third spot. Well, Chris, Nick, well done. You've got to be pleased with that. Yeah, very pleased. It's a very tough track, and to uh, um, win the day here is very special. It was very close, all three races, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the, I think it's one of the best rounds for the racing all year. Uh, it must have been good for the crowd. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, it's I'm not very good at leading the race. It's harder than to be second. And I don't like to lead is very difficult and uh, very nervous today. You seem to do well from the front today. I've got to say. And uh, how about you then, Nick? What's it like being the actual passenger? Uh, pretty scary when you first sort of start, but you get used to it and just hang on in there. Because if you come out, someone's going to run over you. Well, you're done well. Chris, you're hoping to make it fifth year lucky. How are you going to do it now? <laughs> well, it's, lo it's looking good at the minute, but... Um, There's only one man going to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> one day can change a lot. You know, I'd have only had to have one mechanical failure today, and then it would have been all turned round. So uh, it's fingers crossed. A lot of work in the workshop in the week to prevent something happening, but... Uh, Time now for a bit of bubbly. <laughs> no. <laughs> for, uh, possibly, yeah. If we get some, uh, yeah, normally... Uh, if we get some, I'll, I'll think, yeah, I think we go for it tonight. Yeah. I think you deserve it. Well done. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And the overall position at the end of the day saw Etheridge and Brace maintain a healthy lead over their main challengers, Millard and Peters. Well, since this meeting, the championships for both sidecars and four-strokes have finished. And, in fact, it was Millard and Peters who eventually went on to win the sidecar cross title, the fifth time Millard has won it, while Etheridge and Brace, who led for much of the way, only to be dogged by bad luck and breakdowns, were pipped on the post and had to settle for second place for the fourth year running. Graham Herbert and Gary Burt were third. Tiptree rider Sean Mallows with Sean Skeets finished fourth. In the four-stroke championship, Greg Hansen, who missed much of last season with a broken leg, dominated this time round. Lee King was second, Austin Clues third, and Simon Wise fourth.